CataractCoach.com. CTR insertion with cortex still in the bag. Here's how to remove the cortex while a capsule tension ring is already inside the capsule bag. So look at that, fixating now with the left hand. I like that little instrument to kind of hold the paracentesis. That's very interesting. And now creating a capsular axis using just the cystome. Our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Anand Vajwade from India. And this looks like a very nice rexus, very good. So rexus has been created quite nicely. And now let's take a look at the case here. So I had a video about a month ago about CTRs, kind of a summary of when and how to use them. And, you know, placing a capsule tension ring can be very helpful in a lot of these cases where there's zional weakness or laxity. It really can make a big difference there. And the catch is when you, ha when you place a CTR, though, if there's already a lot of cortex in the capsular bag, what ends up happening? The CTR pushes it towards the capsular bag, you know, equator and holds that cortex in place, and it's a little tougher to remove. It's a nice looking incision being made there with the right hand. I like the tunnel length, I like the architecture, I like that it nicked the limbal vessels just barely. It's a good looking incision. Now switching over to the regular microscope lighting, you can see this lens has some central nuclear density. And so getting some hydro dissection, there's a little golden ring of delineation. Beautiful, the whole nucleus comes up. You can take it as it comes up or bring it back down. You may wanna wash off that ocular surface, a lot of gunk on there. And it's a little bit more viscoelastic, always a good thing. Yeah, you can use the FACO probe now and wash that away. And let's take a look what's happening now. Yeah, you, want, you definitely want a cleaner ocular surface than that, though. And also helps the next time sequester the eyelash to get them out of the way. But let's watch the technique here. So FACO probe going inside the eye. And then looks like a little, like my style, tilt and chop. Hey, I like it. Tilt, there's the chop. Beautiful tilt and chop. And now that first half can be removed pretty efficiently. Very nice technique here. You can see we've sped the video up a little bit, 1.6 times the normal speed, just so we can get the whole case done in about five minutes. I know my, my viewers, we like five minute videos, just let's get to the point people, right? So taking out the nucleus here, coming out pretty quickly, very efficiently. That second instrument, just kind of feeding the pieces there, no need to even sub chop it anymore once you have the two halves. I agree with that technique, I do that very frequently, just chop two halves and take out each half, but we don't even need to sub chop. There you go, I like using the FACO probe like that to just irrigate and wash off the surface, that's helpful. And now it looks like um, bimanual INA coming up. So where's the second, second instrument? There we go. So now irrigation with the left hand and aspiration with the right, cleaning up here. Definitely bimanual irrigation and aspiration is very helpful to remove cortex, you get a very good access, 360. But here's where you're gonna watch, watch carefully, you're gonna notice some zonular weakness. And so as this is being removed here, taking out that cortex, that looks pretty good still, still looks pretty stable, but there's something that just tips off Dr. Vajwande that says, hey, I wanna get the CTR going in here. So pulling this out, and then there's some sort of weakness there. So didn't look too bad to me. I probably would have continued with cortex removal and not put in the CTR just, just yet, but certainly there's no harm in doing the CTR now. So filling up the bag with viscoelastic, you definitely want to insert the CTR under viscoelastic. There it is. It looks like he's going to just do a pure manual technique, no injector needed. And that's going to be delivered in, just using one forcep here, you could even use another. And then you got to get that trailing eyelet inside the eye as well, and place that completely in the capture bag. Now, depending on how you did the visco dissection or, or filling up the bag with the viscoelastic, you may have trapped some cortex there. So you're going to want to pull more tangential this time. To get the trapped cortex, you want to pull more tangential and less radial. So let's set up that scope again. Let's get the bimanual IA back. So, okay. Infusion, let's go through the side port. Yeah, don't go through the main incision. It'll leak too much. And now the, the aspirator. Yeah, good tangential pulling. So kind of circumferential on the pulling. And then you want to make sure you get all of it out. If you leave some behind, you know what happens to the cortex. It fluffs up and hydrates overnight and becomes humongous. It goes from a one little small piece to a big fluffy piece the next morning. And that's a pretty clean uh, removal now. Caps are back, looks excellent. Now, again, I would have done the case differently. I would have just taken out all the cortex and then evaluated the capsule bag. But obviously there's no downside because you see this case, it looks great. Nice looking Rexus, beautifully centered. And let's see what we're doing for eye well design. So for the eye well, what's going inside here looks like a single piece acrylic lens. Gonna get that in the capsule bag. 
very nicely placed. And that'll be the end of the case. So everything went beautifully here. Definitely CTRs are something you really have to know how to use. There are definitely cases where you're gonna benefit from using that capture tension ring. You definitely need to know how and why. If you don't know exactly, there is a video from about a month ago called CTRs, when and how. It's only five minutes and it's a good quick review. I think you get out a lot out of it. Go to cataractcoach.com and check it out.